Hello viewers, today we will be cleaning and servicing and repairing a Windmere oscillating fan. This is a Windmere fan model DF-7 and um, it's already taken apart because I've already done part of the repairing in a separate video. The oscillation mechanism was not working which is something Windmere has made themselves infamous for. So I repaired that in its own video because that was kind of interesting. So now in this video we're going to clean the bearings out because those need to be cleaned and relubricated. We're going to clean all the dust out of the different components. And we're also going to fix the base because it's missing one of these feet and it makes it very wobbly and unstable. Okay, so before we get started with the cleaning, I would like to fully disassemble this unit. And uh, I'd like this to not fly apart, because that's a pain in the rear to get that put back together. Um, okay. Few, too many tools floating around right now. Okay, so I want to take this apart and show the switch because that's kind of an interesting thing. And um, don't think we'll be able to remove it from the base entirely, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out as soon as we get inside of here. So uh, here's what I wanted to show about the base, or about the switch rather. It's not an actual dial switch, it's a regular old two position sliding switch. But for whatever reason they were insistent on having the dial design. So they just made a dial that turns the, uh, the switch like this. And I think it's a very terrible design because it's, the switch doesn't give you a lot of leverage and it's kind of hard to operate. But uh, that's what they did. And I don't think they're the only manufacturer to have done that. I, I believe there's a couple of other fans that operate that way as well. But I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And, uh... Let's see, how does this come out? The uh, switch is, is soldered in there, so that's not going to be able to be removed. So we'll just have to clean the base uh, manually, which I don't like, but is what it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wash all the plastic components. We got the blade, the guards, that switch, motor cover, oscillation controller, and front guard, and I guess we can clean the base too for whatever that's worth. And then we'll uh, we'll come back and we're going to service the motor, we'll clean the base, and uh, we'll get a video of all that. Alright, the plastic parts have been cleaned, so now we're going to service the motor. So we're going to remove these bearing screws, uh, which I had on before in the other video turned out to be extraneous for what I was trying to do. Now we need to remove them. And interestingly enough, these are, are locked on here with Loctite and a lock washer. So somebody at Windmere did not want these bearings to come apart.
So here's something kind of interesting. The shaft actually gets narrower after the bearing. It's quite nice because in this case, even though it's absolutely filthy, the bearing will slide right off. Let's see if I can get the rear bearing off of here now. Yep, that came off relatively easily. Remnants of the Loctite. They put a lot of Loctite on there. Two big pieces for a tiny little bearing. That's kind of outrageous. I'm not sure what entity thought that was necessary, but it's totally not. Alright, so let's clean this shaft here. This is really gummed up here. I don't know if they used, I hope they didn't use detergent oil, but they may have used detergent oil, which is kind of what, what this does over time, and that's another reason why we don't use it in fans here. In this shop, we only use non-detergent oil in fans. But that's a different story. You can actually see the accumulation of the lubricant inside the bearing where it dried up and hardened. Oh, I can see it. I don't know if you can. And that, that's why the the spin down time is so limited right now because all that junk is essentially counterproductive you know, compared to what oil is supposed to be doing. Make sure I get all that out of there. And then we're going to put new non detergent, of course, lubricant in these bearings. That should be good enough. Couldn't do the same thing with the other bearing, the rear bearing. Now this is the bearing that was next to the oscillation mechanism which has some kind of a grease inside of it and so this one appears to be a little bit worse. So all that sticky junk coming out of there. All that dried up lubricants coming out of the bearings. This is probably one of the worst I've seen in a while as far as uh, solidified lubricant comes. I'm actually going to go ahead and brush this off because it's so bad. And there goes the telephone. i got to change that Christmas. Okay, and we're back. So we're going to clean, I think we cleaned the bearings, I don't even remember, yeah I think they were cleaned, clean the shaft off which actually is really kind of, kind of gross. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some detergent oil, put a little bit of detergent oil on here and I'm going to clean this with the detergent oil. There's a lot of a lot of cake down lubricant coming off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these things off of here and clean those up too.
as one filthy set of bearings. Yeah, I do think that's one of the worst I've seen in a very long time. Alright, now that's cleaned up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe some of the dust off here. I'm not going to really get concerned about this because cosmetically it makes no difference. You can't see it. But I'll just get the dust off of there so it's not blocking up the airflow. That's really all that matters as far as cleaning the inside of this goes. that may be interested. Here's a look at the information tag on the motor itself. It is a Cam One motor. I'm sure that was probably made in China. Dog darn it. I should have to clean this before I wash the base. Ideally, you'd blow this whole thing out with compressed air, it'd be a lot easier, but it's like, what is it, outside? 20 degrees out, so I don't really have any desire to go outside and use the air compressor. Okay, so now, it's getting late, it's almost 9.30, um, now we're going to use the infamous oil for fans. going to oil the bearings. Actually before we do that I want to show one other thing I discovered. If you look at that hole closely you can see where the shaft had worn, a, uh, worn it down because it wasn't positioned on there correctly anymore. So it was run like that for quite a while. Which is interesting. And again okay so we're gonna put where's the oil go here it is put a little bit of oil on here I can spin as freely as possible and I think these are the same. Yeah, as far as I can tell, these are the same, so it doesn't really matter which one goes on first. Put some oil on the shaft. And I'd like to try to get this through here without getting any of that grease on this. I don't think I was super successful with that. Yeah, I think I got some of the grease on there. Oh well, it is what it is. Well, actually, now it's going to get even worse. <laughs> I got to take it off and get this into position first. Okay. Now we'll get the front bearing put on. Mm. 
No, oh, wait a minute. They are different. Are they different? No, they're not different. Why isn't this going in there? This is not... Bearings are not fitting into the holes. This has behaved relatively well the whole time. Now it's going to do this. No, it's kind of on there. Well, whatever. Hopefully it'll figure itself out when I tighten it up. That's moderately annoying, though, I have to say that much. Alright, now we can put the screws back in. Maybe that's why it was on there so tight, because the dog iron things don't line up the way they should. I'm not sure if that's... Uh, Cheap manufacturing issue or what? Yeah, this this is really frustrating. I'm gonna have to pull the oscillator off in order to get these bearings back on or there's just not enough room to work with because of the way the washers have to fit in there so I wasn't expecting to get that call I don't normally do projects that are you know going to take a long time this late at night and uh, I was hoping to get this done around 9 o'clock and then it's been a half an hour talking on the phone. Now it's almost 10 o'clock and I want to go to sleep and I don't want to deal with this anymore. You know what, I'm just going to pull this all the way off.
told you. Okay, now we're going to put this back on. Hopefully this will tighten up correctly for the second time now. I think I'm kind of pushing my luck with this thing with the way the... the whatever those things are called on to hold it together. It's not threading. And now it's threading. Yeah, I'm not sure that's gonna hold up. It may have to get glued on or something. But for now I think it'll work. Alright. That's that. this gearbox back together and this has plenty of lubrication on there I'm not going to put any more on there I don't have the proper grease for it anyways put this thing back on and then I gotta go wash my hands because everything's gonna get slimy Okay, so that's put together. I'll screw this on. It's okay. Um, the knob back in place and get the switch going, and then we'll start it up and see how it works. suspects it to work perfectly fine so hopefully it does So before we go any further, let's just power it up and give it a test to make sure it's running well. The switch is a little flaky. something wrong with that switch. I don't know if it just needs some contact cleaner sprayed in there or if the wire's coming out or what. Let's see if there's any obvious problems with it. I don't see anything wrong with it.
Let's see if that impacted its performance. I'm going to turn the oscillation off at this point. It's already running. I don't know, I think that may mean it a little bit better. Couldn't tell you for certain. But uh, that's all it's getting for now, and if it becomes an issue, then they'll revisit and we'll spray some deoxin or something like that and see if that remedies the issue. Tag on it. Not perfect. Well, actually, you know what? I think it's better than it was. Yeah, actually, that did make a difference. All right, I'm, I'm content with that. Okay, uh, what's next? Oh, the base. I did fix the base. This is the new foot. It's just made of hot glue. Works perfectly fine. I could go around and buy another grommet like this and look better, but quite frankly, when it's on the table, you can't see it anyway, so that will uh, work perfectly fine. Now, this wasn't put on properly when I took it off. There's two hooks in the back it's got a clip on, so now it's seems to be on there correctly. Okay. And let's see here. Put the motor. Arr, it's getting too late for this. I'm going to put some oil on the shaft because this is really difficult to take apart. And when it comes time to service this again, which I have a feeling it won't be all that far into the future if I end up using this for anything, I don't want it to be that difficult to take apart again. The shaft 
feels kind of rough. It probably could fare to be sanded down a little bit, but I'm not going to bother with that. I got it off once, I can get it off again. All right, we're wrapping this up here. Put the cage on, and we're going to be all done. So we're ready to do the final checkout here. It uh, came out pretty good. Visually wise, it's very, very clean, not too scuffed up or anything. The guard still has some shine to it. The blades are translucent again. So let's see how it works. It's uh, not wobbling anymore. And it should be oscillating. Start off with stationary, high. Okay, we're going to oscillate, I guess. It's oscillating normally. I think the oscillation levers could fare to be lubricated, but I hardly ever use fans in oscillation mode, so probably not worth the time. At least for now, if I ever decide to use it in oscillation, I can always clean it later on, or oil it later on. Ooh, well, low. and we'll cut it off. Put the suspend down with oscillation engaged. Not bad. So now we'll cut the oscillation off. This really is quite a powerful fan. That's really a whip in the air around. Still put out a strong breeze. Some of these uh, things are a little bent here. That could fare to be straightened out. This needs to be tightened. Looks pretty good. Even from a distance, it's still. Uh, it's, that's only on low. It's still really moving the air. I could see why this got a lot of use. It's kind of noisy though. Yeah, that's uh, that's honestly impressive airflow. Spin down without oscillation engaged. It should be a little bit longer. And the height adjustment's falling again. I don't think we missed the spin down because of that. Let's try again. Bearings seem to be fine. There's no rattling or anything. Yeah, the spin time, or whatever, the spin down time is good. All right, I would say that was a very successful restoration project. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.